Hey there, this is Match once again. Welcome back to another review. This is for RB, aka Russell. He sent me a bunch of stuff and he asked me to review this one, which is fine. And that is the mule. Just got around to seeing this today, and overall I liked it. Now, this is the latest film from Clint Eastwood. He produced it, directed it, and starred in it. I think the last time he had starred in the film was Trouble with the Curve. I believe that's what it was called. I can't remember. I think it was in 2012. For all we know, this could be the very last film Eastwood stars in because he's getting up there in age. He's like 89 years old. And I would say the film is worth a watch for Clint Eastwood's performance. I mean, the rest of the movie is fine. Supporting cast, you have Bradley Cooper and Lawrence Fishburne as DEA agents. Michael Pena is one of them as well. Diane Wiest from The Lost Boys, among others. She's the ex-wife of Eastwood's character. Andy Garcia has a small role as a head, uh, one of the heads of a Mexican cartel. He's not in the film too much, though. But the, the, the big star of the film, the big thumbs up of the film, is Eastwood's performance. And this is... Apparently, based on a true story, a New York Times Magazine article, the Sonola Cartel's 90-year-old drug mule. Very interesting choice for a story. Now, Clint, Clint, his character is a guy who deals with plants, grows them, wins awards for them, likes to hang out with his friends, but... He's put work before family, so his ex-wife, Diane Wiest, and his daughter, they don't really want anything to do with him because of the dumb things he's done. Again, put in work before family. He gets a foreclosure. He loses his job, or at least what he would make some money from because of the internet. Because people just buy flowers on the internet, not from him. And his granddaughter's wedding is coming up. And his ex-wife is getting mad at him because you missed all this stuff. You haven't done all this stuff. Now you won't even help to pay for your granddaughter's wedding. So one thing leads to another. Someone whose friends are one of the bridesmaids tells Clint about this job. Doesn't give much details, but says you can get paid to just drive. So Eastwood does that. I like this funny bit where uh, they show Eastwood's age. The the guys ask him about you, know, you can text, right? And Eastwood's reaction of text? I don't know why, it's just that, that was sort of a funny little interaction. And we see him on these runs, and come to find out, the packages he's delivering are drugs. When he does find out, he decides to keep doing it because he uses the money to pay his finances, buy a new truck, pay for his granddaughter's uh, wedding, the VFW needs help being rebuilt, so he gives money to them. And Eastwood's character... Go to like him, his interactions with these other figures of the cartel, how he likes to sing his songs while doing these runs, how he's trying to reconnect. He's friendly with his granddaughter and trying to a little bit connect with his ex wife. There's some fun bits of humor, like he walks by the. He, he thinks they're guys, these bikers, but they're women. And the women call themselves dykes. And East was like, oh, okay. And helps them with their bike. And they say, thank you. And Eastwood says, you're welcome, dykes. <laughs> uh, again, certain moments that made me laugh. 
when it shifts to the investigation with Bradley Cooper and Lawrence Fishburne, it's not really that interesting because you really did you really don't know much about any of Bradley Cooper's character other than there's one anniversary he missed. That's it. And it seems as if it's only doing that just to tell us, oh, by the way, these cops are investigating. Part of me thinks that the hour and 56 minute running time, which is... slows down from bits and pieces here and there. A lot of the bits were Bradley Cooper and Lawrence Fishburne could have been cut out. In fact, Lawrence Fishburne's character, he's just one of the DEA guys who tells Bradley Cooper this and that. He could have been cut out of the movie. In fact, and even Bradley Cooper, his part could have been significantly shortened because no one's seen the film and when they come out of it, oh, Bradley Cooper played a great character. He's a good actor. I like Bradley Cooper, but I mean, it's just a DEA agent and pops up every once in a while because him and Michael Pena have an informant and the informant tells them what's going on. I get it almost as if uh, some kind of exposition. So those are the parts that are, are uninteresting to me that if you ever watch this, you might as well just fast forward to those parts. But when it sticks with Eastwood, the film works. And thankfully a good chunk of the film is Eastwood's character. Because, like I said, you really go to like this character. You feel, you go to feel bad for this character. It, it, I mean, I'm a Clint Eastwood fan. It, it, it's sad to see him so frail because he's 89 years old, but he still has that fire with him, which is the nice thing. Brad, this is not an intense character. It's not like Heartbreak Ridge. It's not that kind of character. He just once in a while has a, a fun, sort of smart-ass comment, but overall, you tell that he wants to be a decent human being. And when it gets to the third act, you get some pretty heartfelt moments in there. And a little bit about Clint Eastwood, I do enjoy a lot of his films. I remember seeing Kelly's Heroes when I was a kid, and although it's a bit long of a movie, I do remember enjoying it. Uh, the Man With No Name trilogy, specifically, I think for a few dollars more may be my favorite, but I really like A Fistful of Dollars. Good to Bad and the Ugly is good. Uh, High Plains Drifter is great. I love his Dirty Harry films. Those will be my favorite Clint Eastwood movies. I should re reviewed the Dirty Harry films long ago on this channel. The Rookie with him and Charlie Sheen. I love that film. Grand Torino I could never get into. In the Line of Fire is wonderful. Uh, he's made a lot of good work. A lot of good work. And... I haven't really seen much of Million Dollar Baby and American Sniper. He directed that. I wasn't a big fan of. Just the the story didn't appeal to me. But this was a more appealing story to me. Especially given the more spoilers when you get to the third act when sp start spoilers starting now. Andy Garcia's character, who was friendly with Eastwood, he gets killed. And some new people take over, and they're much more strict with Eastwood's character. And say, you, you, we're not going to babysit you, but if you divert on the path, we'll fuck you up, we'll kill you. But then he finds out that his ex-wife is sick, and he decides to be with her while she's sick and dying. And those are definitely the most heartfelt, sweetest moments, as Eastwood apologizes, and Diane Weiss did a good job really felt sorry for her and a few little exchanges they have like one of the last words that she says it's it's all the world to me that you're here and Eastwood's character goes I love you that was very sweet and then she passes away so I mean it definitely has a heart on its sleeve a heart on its shoulder which I appreciate 
and then he drive he goes back on and uh, gets caught by the cops where he's going to spend the rest of his life in jail which I mean he's 89 years old so but that could be construed as a downbeat ending but the, the way it's done I, I liked and the fact that he still gets to roll flowers which he has a passion for in prison and throughout all this he definitely connected more with his daughter he's still friendly with his granddaughter uh, the dark hair does care for him again just for a while they were strange so in a way he did get his family back they'll visit him and like I said the, the way it was done I thought it was decently handled I mean it's based on a true story so uh, they had to follow that too but I mean, it, it didn't make me mad or piss me off I thought it was handled fairly well by Mr. East, Mr. Eastwood I mean, he did a good job directing Again, my only flaws is really a little bit of the pacing, only because of the Bradley Cooper, Lawrence Fishburne, Michael Payne, the DEA stuff were just not interesting. They were just, here's our informant, he's going to tell us what we need to know. Or Lawrence Fishburne going, we need a rest. We need a rest. That's really it. So again, most of that could... I think it would have been interesting just to take all that out and strictly be in Clint Eastwood's point of view. The entire film. And you could probably edit it to work out that way. I, I think you could. Probably just keep the one exchange Bradley Cooper and Clint Eastwood have in this diner. Which I would say, you know, that's Bradley Cooper's. If he has a good scene in the movie, I would say it's that scene. And yeah, Bradley Cooper doesn't do a bad job acting. It's just there's nothing to his character. So I, I think if you took the film, put into it editing, what's the phrase I want to use? Editing station, and just cut most of the, all the Lawrence Fishburne and most of the Bradley Cooper stuff, the informant stuff, I think could have worked. And the audience can figure out like how he was caught. I mean... And you throw in like a couple little things. I, I don't know. I just, I guess I would have handled it differently. But yeah, if you're a Clint Eastwood fan, definitely give this a look for Eastwood's performance. He did a really good job with it. And again, it, it kind of saddens me because I just have a bad feeling. You know, knock on wood, I'm wrong, but I just have a bad feeling. That this will be the last time we see Eastwood star in a film. Because if it took seven years, if it was 2012 to star in, from the previous film to this one, I don't know, a lot can happen in seven years or five years or however you. So. Sort of a bittersweet ending, if that's the case. And there's been a lot of actors who, if they made a final film, they're really not good. This is at least a good flick, so. Definitely worth a look if you're a Clean Switch fan. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care, and we will see you on the next one. Later.